Vaishnavas, welcome to New Goloka Dham. On this festive day, we will be describing one of Lord Krishna's sweet, nectarian pastimes from Shudaragunath Das Goswami's Mukta Charita, the pearl pastime. He who is more attractive than tens of millions of cupids whose bodily luster resembles that of a blue lotus in full bloom, and whose pastimes have completely enchanted the world of 
animate and inanimate beings. To he who is the son of the chief of the cowherds, Gopendra Nandana, to Sri Govinda, I offer my respectful salutations. I adore the divine couple Sri Sri Radha Madhava, who have become immersed in an ocean of playful pastimes through the buying and selling of pearls, each of them mutually desirous of victory. In the matter of disputatious wrangling over said merchandise, I take shelter of the full moon, Sri Guranga Mahaprabhu, who has risen in the sky of Sri Sachimata's womb, with the intention of bestowing the nectar of his own pure devotion upon the citizens of the world. Aho! By the most celebrated mercy of he from whom I have attained the hope of some service to the best of all names within the orb of this earth, Sri Harinam Maha Mantra, to Sri Sachinandan Mahaprabhu, to Swarup, Rupa, and Sanatan, and to the extensive dominions of Mathura Puri, with all of its pasturing grounds and residences, to Sri Radhakund, to the chief of all mountains, Sri Govardhan, and to the lotus feet of Sri Radha Madhava, to Sri Gurudev, I bow my head again and again. For the purpose of increasing the rapturous delight of those divine persons, the celebrated devotees of the Lord, who are conversant with the science of the mellows of devotion, I will now churn the ocean known as Sri Vrindavan, that the waves of nectar produced therefrom, namely the wonderful character and qualities of Sri Hari, may expand, thus causing the devotees to drown therein. After hearing briefly that Sri Krishna had created in Vrindavan a creeper which produced pearls, Queen Satyabhama inquired from the Lord about this unique event. See there, now Krishna, the ultimate enjoyer of all blissful pastimes, enters the stage with his queen, Satyabhama. My lord, I heard that these beautiful pearls set into this bracelet you have gifted me were produced from the fruits of a creeper. Please, tell me what you know of this. Where is it possible to grow pearls such as these? Dear Satyabhama, please listen attentively as I describe to you this pastime of my childhood. One day, in Gokula, during the month of Karthik, on the day of Deepavali, the residents of Gokula were arranging all kinds of decorations for celebrating the festival. Amongst them, Sri Radhika was seated within a courtyard near Malya Harikunda in the company of her sakis, where she was assembling ornaments from a collection of the most exquisite pearls. Oh, beautiful girls, it is with great awe and wonder that I approach you in hope of attaining my heart's desire. Oh, ladies, will you offer this humble person at your lotus feet a handful of pearls so that my group of friends and I can decorate our cows? <laughs> because you have all recently attained the priceless touchstone of adolescent beauty, is this pride of yours, which is now so magnified that it resembles a very tall mountain, somehow blocking your ears? Please heed for a moment the matter which I am presenting before you, and which is amiable to you all. Dear Krishna, these extremely costly pearls, which are fit to be worn by the kings and queens, are now deemed as being suitable for your cows and she buffaloes? <laughs> I know. Why don't we just give you all the pearls so that you can decorate your cows? <laughs> you don't have to give me all of the pearls, but at least you should give me some of them 
which are simply perfect for decorating the four horns of my cows. Oh, but Krishna, there is not even one pearl here worthy of your cows. Come now, my friends, let us leave. We have much work to do. Oh, clever Lalita, just forget it. Henceforward, you will never be able to call me a miser. Oh, affectionate mother, please give me some pearls. Oh, darling son, why do you ask me for pearls? Do you wish to make some ornaments? No, mother. I will plant them in the field and grow thousands of extraordinarily beautiful, uncommon pearls. <laughs> my child, the joy of my life. Heed my words. The pearls you see come from oysters in the ocean. They will never sprout if you plant them. Oh, darling boy, you can have all the pearls you want. You don't need to plant them. I will give you every last pearl we have. Oh, mother, your sweet words fill my heart with love. However, you need not do that. I only need a few pearls. I will plant them and within three days, they will definitely sprout. I assure you, you will be able to see them with your own eyes. When have I ever been able to refuse you? Come child, you can choose the pearls that you like. Carefully protecting his pearls, Krishna proceeded to the banks of the Yamuna, where he and his friends began to prepare the soil in three separate plots. Some gopis happened to pass that way and made their presence known by their loud mocking laughter. <laughs> Nevertheless, the gopas ignored them and continued their hard work. <laughs> My dear Gopas, thank you for helping me with my endeavor to plant pearls. I believe they are coming along well, but they could be even better if we were to water them with the Gopi's sweet and nectarian milk. You speak the truth. Perhaps we should approach the Gopis and beg them for some of their milk. However, I suspect we will be rejected once again. You need not worry, my friends. I shall go and ask them, and maybe drink a little bit of milk on the way back. <laughs> Wait, I shall come with you. I doubt the gopis will even consider our request. And then there's the matter of our friend's enormous appetite. See there, suckies. Here come the pearl farmers. <laughs> Madu <laughs> Mangala, my bangles recently broke. Will you please plant them and maybe grow some more for me? <laughs> Listen, Krishna, the master of Gokula, has taken shelter of your lotus feet. Be merciful, O oh noble ladies, and hear a request. <laughs> Dear Sibala, you please us with your kind words. <laughs> please, just let us know what Krishna wants. He begs his dearest Radha to give him milk so he may water his pearls with them. <laughs> We come to you because it's a well-known fact that the milk of the gopis is the most precious and the best of the best! Our milk is not suitable for such a noble purpose. <laughs> Rather, you should use the milk of those cows for whom you are going to such great lengths to procure a quantity of pearls. 
<laughs> she speaks the truth. Tell Krishna that we shall not provide him with milk, and rather he should use his own. You're making a mistake. Come, friend Subala. <laughs> Krishna, the gopis have refused us milk. What should we do now? It's all right, my dear friend. Do not sound so dejected. We shall use the milk of our beloved cows. Oh, Krishna, come here at once and see this. It has only been three days, and these pearls have begun to sprout. Wow, this is excellent news. Krishna, you must go at once and tell your mother. See, my dear mother, look at these beautiful pearls. What is this? Oh, Krishna, what is impossible for you, my darling? You have proven me wrong, and you have shown me once again that you are truly extraordinary. Friends, friends, Krishna has done the impossible once again. These pearls' effulgence rivals that of the sun. You're right. These are so much more beautiful than the pearls we receive from the oysters in the ocean. Krishna had once again proven how wondrous he is by achieving what everyone deemed impossible. How can we even begin to understand the inconceivable glories of the Supreme Lord, who appeared in Gokula as the Brajbasi's beloved cowherd prince? Radha, the scent of these blooming pearl flowers are driving the bees mad and is pervading the entire Gokula with their fragrant aroma. She speaks the truth. These pearl fruits bear an uncommon, alluring beauty. These pearls are far more beautiful than our own. How unfortunate. Krishna will never give us any of his pearls because when he had previously requested from us some pearls and milk, we refused to comply. But what does it matter? It's not that we didn't witness the procedure for growing pearls. In fact, we have seen exactly how it is done. Therefore, giving up our lack of courage, why shouldn't we begin a pearl field, which is at least twice the size of Krishna's? My dear friends who are now overwhelmed by insanity, these sorts of miraculous activities, such as picking up Sri Govardhan and producing pearls from the earth, marvelous deeds which are difficult even for demigods to perform are nevertheless accomplished without effort by our krishna no doubt he has received from some great sage special mantras and medicines which have enabled him to execute these wonderful activities we cannot begin to understand let alone imitate his majestic deeds we can also receive a mantra possessing esoteric powers from nandimukhi the most accomplished disciple of Purnamasi. So why shouldn't we enthusiastically persevere in this matter? I agree with Vishaka. Come, let us now approach Nandimuki. Alas, my friends are not aware that they are making a very grave mistake. <laughs> We offer our humble obeisances unto you. We have come here to ask you how we can grow beautiful pearls, similar to those of Krishna's. Friends, you should know it to be the truth that these pearls have been produced from the earth, not by the power of any mantras uttered by Mukunda. Therefore, you should also similarly engage in the cultivation of pearls. 
but carefully water your plants with fresh, fragrant butter. In this way, you will get fruits which are superior even to those of Sri Krishna's. Oh Nandimukhi, you have done us a great service. Thank you. The gopis, feeling confident that they would take home a pearl harvest thousands of times greater than what they had planted, secretly gathered all the pearls from the houses of their parents and in-laws. Then, they began preparing the fields for their newly discovered agricultural enterprise. Pearls that were piled up in baskets waiting to be strung, and those that had already been strung into necklaces were all brought for this purpose. Each and every gopi carefully sewed the pearls into the well-tilled soil and watered them every day, morning, noon, and evening with milk, butter, and the most fragrant ghee. My dear friends, the young plants in our fields do not appear the same as the ones that we have seen in Krishna's fields. I do not know what will be the outcome of all this. Now, we have to make sure that Krishna's friends don't notice this. Therefore, we should now adopt the pretense of constructing a very nice fence to protect our plant. But in reality, the purpose of this enclosure will be to prevent Krishna's friends from seeing our field. Oh, Lalita, you are right. Until we can be sure that we will also grow pearls, we should cover our plants with a beautiful fence. Alas, our plants are nothing like those of Krishna's. It appears that we have only produced plants with the symptoms of thorny creepers. Ah! There, there. Don't lose hope, my dear friend. Yes, keep faith. Perhaps there is still a possibility that our pearls will grow. They might just be slightly delayed. Oh, friends, do not delude yourselves. What shall we do? We have taken all the pearls from our homes and also an abundance of milk and ghee. What shall we tell the elders in our home when they ask for the fruits of our endeavor? This clever Nandimuki has deceived us. Being partial to Krishna, she has collaborated with him to humiliate us. Let us go and confront her. Nandimuki, how could you betray us? All that has sprouted from our plants is thorns. Friends, on the strength of whatever austerities I have performed, I am prepared to declare an oath that I have not deceived you in any way. Rather, all of you have spoiled everything. What? How have we spoiled everything? Oh, you who are so conceited by your cleverness and pride, I will explain to you exactly what happened. Listen carefully. With the motive in mind of soundly defeating you, Sri Krishna very expertly enticed someone with bowls and bowls of sweet rice, namely his friend, the buffoon Madhumangal, to uproot all of your pearl plants, which had just begun to sprout, and replace them with thorny creepers. The pearls thus obtained from your gardens were then planted in his own fields. I have come to know all of this as a sure and doubtless truth. Perhaps it was Nandimuki who beguiled us, or perhaps it was the crest jewel of the shrewdest of slick operators, Krishna. We are at present sorely afflicted by the misery of this moment, but what will we gain by all of this blaming? Right now, our greatest distress is the persecution we face from our superiors. But if we can somehow or other show them the pearls that we thought to be lost for good, 
only then will our fears be relieved. Pearls, however, are especially rare here in Gokul. Therefore, the only matter at hand is to consider how we might obtain those pearls from Krishna, at whatever the price may be. I suppose you are right, my friend. You and Vishaka should approach Krishna. I will send Kanchanlutta with a sufficient amount of gold to pay for the pearls. We have heard from reliable sources that you are desirous of selling your new pearl crop. Therefore, we have come with an offer of gold, which is of the purest quality. Please give us in return its proper value by presenting us with a choice selection of your pearls. My dear gopis, with great submission, when I humbly entreated you to give me a few pearls, you wouldn't even give me one. Then I requested you for some milk to water our field, but you denied once again. Before we sell you any pearls, we will throw them all into the waters of the Kalindi. Even if you present us with everything in all your houses and the houses themselves, we will never give you even one pearl of insignificant value. Towards us. You, please be the middleman in this affair. Lalita, Krishna speaks the truth. When we humbly approached you for even a few pearls, you rejected us. And our pearls are priceless. We cannot sell them to anyone. <laughs> We will not sell them to anyone. If it were not for fear of our husbands and elders with whom we have to live every day, would any girl have otherwise tolerated these ugly and mean words? Oh, Subala, we are prepared to pay even more than the going rate. Well, after all is said and done, I am of course very soft-hearted by nature. 
So I won't be able to remain so relentless as all of you are. If I don't let you have them, then what shall I do with so many pearls? But who will determine the price? All of you? Yes, just see. Kanchen Lata is approaching. Radha has sent her with a generous amount of gold. Imagining this golden vine, Kanchen Lata to be a priceless object, Radha has sent her to me. But these pearl fruits are worth much more than heaps and heaps of kanchen or gold. This fact is quite well known in this world. So how is it that this one vine of gold, kanchen lata, is expected to be sufficient payment for this great collection of pearls? You are simply harassing us! Friends, let us return to Radha and tell her what has happened here. Radhika, Krishna and his friends refused to give us any pearls, threatening that they would rather throw all their beautiful pearls into the Kalindi rather than selling them to us. What? Dear Gopis, actually, Krishna is very eager to sell his pearls. If Sri Radhika herself approaches him, then I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to retrieve all of the pearl fruits that you long for. In this matter, I will assist as a mediator as you requested. Okay, I will come. Lalita, here is what I propose. Please go and convey this to Krishna. Go, dear friend. I will stay over here, hidden away from Krishna's eyes. Why am I not seeing Radha? Oh, Prince of Gokula, the respectable lady, Jatila, has affectionately kept Radha at home today for the purpose of executing some specific household duties. Vidya, is Radha no longer interested in attaining the pearls? No, it isn't that. Not at all. We have come to pay the price for her also. Well, Vishaka is Radha, and Radha is Vishaka. Therefore, Vishaka can pay for her. All of my Sakas have firmly decided that any of you who do not come personally will have to pay four times the price and will get ordinary pearls only. And until Radha comes in person to make her payment, I will hold Vishaka as prisoner. Stop! Be quiet! Shut your mouth! are humbly offering, please kindly accept. And what are they offering? If it is suitable, then I will accept. Their proposal is this. You are the master of vast wealth, the son of the sovereign of Raj. Listen to our plea. It will take a couple of days to collect all of the goods for payment. 
problem is that our elders are continually expressing their distress at having lost all of their pearl ornaments and continue to chastise us for this. Therefore, we request that you now present the pearls to us as a loan, which we will repay within one or two days according to whatever procedure is desired by you. Oh, Subal, you are extremely gullible. You know absolutely nothing about their dealings. If these gopis decide to abscond with the pearls by taking shelter within the walls of the great fort of their husbands, surrounded by the mountains of their elders, then what will you do? Oh, Krishna, I assure you, you can trust them. Go ahead and give them the pearls now, knowing that you will collect the goods with interest very soon. This will also greatly increase your affectionate relationship with them. Are, Subal, you are Subal, endowed with auspicious strength in name only, in a male in name only. Indeed, this is not the first time that I have noticed your appearance to be just like that of the weaker sex. Better you should just sit down here while I dress myself for battle. They will not take any pearls until the price is paid. Okay then, dear Krishna, without joking, please inform them of the proper price. Friend Subal, to whom should I quote the price first? Since Lalita is the chief amongst them, please tell us what payment you will receive from her. Very well. If the chief amongst this battalion, Sri Lalita, is able to even once pin me down in a wrestling match, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, then I will come before her as a woman appearing just like a submissive and dependent wife. I will sing the glories of her manliness and virility. I will in this way become her servant. This is the small payment I will receive from her. You clown Subal! It seems that you have also become devoted to the cause of, nay, completely gone over to the camp of the friend of Madhumangal, the lord of hypocrisy, the greatest buffoon and cheat of Gokul. Since we find that you have brought us before him only to cast us into the ocean of affliction and frustration, chafing us as the butt of your jokes. Come, Sakis, let's go. <laughs> And see there, noble Nandimuki is coming. Oh Lord Krishna, all of these darling young girls assembled here are your highest objects of affection and are also continuously devoted to you. 
kindly glance upon us by giving up this persistence of yours and accept whatever they are capable of giving, which may be of value within the realms of practicality. Then, satisfy us by bestowing upon them the extraordinary pearls. Nandimukki, my prices are very low. Only for Lalita was I charging some nominal fee. <laughs> but if she requests, I will reduce that also. O oh, Prince of Braja, I have heard from them all about your nominal prices. But now, it is time to leave all joking aside. After having determined the appropriate prices for everyone here, you can quote them now before me. My price is very simple. I am the Lord of the Night, the Moon. The Gopi, Jeshta, where is she? Should abandon her usual trajectory and rise up with passion on the sky of my breast between Radha, who has already appeared there, and Anuradha, Lalita, who is now in the process of rising. Once there, either by herself or in their company, she should very slowly and gently kiss the moon of my mouth with her lotus soft lips. <gasps> Nandimoki, why are they getting so angry to hear these words of mine, which are so propitious as regards to their own individual fulfillment? Nandimoki, we do not wish to deal with Krishna. He is a cheat. You told us yourself that you saw Krishna steal our pearl trees and replace them. What? This is a lie. Krishna did not steal any of your pearls. He is the Lord of the universe and his powers are incomprehensible by people such as us. We cannot even begin to understand his potency. He is right. Krishna planted pearls in the ground himself and got them to sprout. I can vouch for him. Not only that, they all grew luxuriously and produced such an abundance of blooming flowers and fruits. <laughs> Was this due to the influence of your dear friend's supernatural potencies? Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It was because of the potency of the soil of Vrindavan. Lalita say that it was due to his association with young girls. Yes, this has all come about as a result of his association with young women. Then how is it that your pearls turned into thorny bushes? It was on account of the defective condition of the soil and the imperfections of the pearls we planted. Hold on there. These foolish caustic female magicians are claiming that the very things I have so easily accomplished through my own mystic powers have been done through their own inferior magical tricks. Hmm. This self-styled perfected sense controller thinks that his illusions are real mystic powers and then he proclaims as much with his own mouth. O oh, prince devoted to duty, your occupations of agriculture and cow protection are clearly understood by us. But I have never heard mention of this buying and selling business. Nandimuki, don't you know why we're doing this? These girls are presently very perturbed due to the complete unavailability of pearls. So I have taken up selling in order to facilitate my real vocation, this lucrative pearl trading business. His real meaning is this. During the day, the gopis are greatly afflicted by separation from Krishna. He is trying to make some provision so that they can meet together, even when he is hurting the cows and such, so that their agitation will be due to the experience of ecstatic symptoms of love and not due to feelings of want. extremely shrewd gopis, after saying so many sweet things, will simply, in the end, take all these pearls and enter into some inaccessible place, some labyrinth maze, where you will never find them. Friend, all of these heavenly damsels are chaste and respectable girls. They are very upright and pure in their exchange of love. 
they have energetically taken their most desired objects from me on many occasions and then paid me back most satisfactorily, some at double my original investment and some at triple. Only Ranganamala and Dulasi have displayed any contrariety in the matter of payment. Really? Ranganamala and Tulsi? So ungrateful! My friend has such a simple and affable nature that he speaks well of you even though you have not paid back any of the celestial commodities you owe him. Oh, most venerable Madhumangal, is there anyone in this assembly who does not hold the words just uttered by your friend to be dearer than the most ambrosial nectar? If only it weren't for the fact that the smell of the marijuana of lies permeates his every word, nay, every syllable. <laughs> <laughs> this Madhu Mangala is definitely antagonizing the situation. After binding him tightly with some vines and creepers, take him! Not to our soft-hearted Shriradika, but to Jatila and Abhimanyu. There, he can collect his dues in the form of a good, sound thrashing from the Lion of Java, Abhimanyu. Bravo, well done, Thinavidya. Uh, dear friend, I have some very important work waiting for me at home. I'll be back as soon as I'm finished. <laughs> Shame, when you're with me, why do you fear the tall talks of these weak young girls? <laughs> Their baseless recrimination will go no further. For now, I will attack in battle with the fatal weapons of my sharp nails, the very form of the wealth of their newfound freshness and youthfulness, which have never been seen even by their respective husbands. Namely, those two colorful golden caskets marked with the dawn-hued signs of the moon, which they keep covered with the fine cloth of their bodices on their chests. Then I will cause my indomitable commanding officers to plunder the ruby gems of their unparalleled lotus lips. <laughs> In this way, they will be rendered silent. <laughs> this foppish young prince <laughs> is addicted to the drug of love <laughs> and is therefore excessively lusty. Does this crest jewel amongst the most cunning of all charlatans think that he'll really be able to get away with exhibiting his amusing activities in front of the eyes of all assembled here? Listen, Nandumoki, there is a great goddess who is a treasure chest of the rarest jewels of the most auspicious qualities, whose speech is like ambrosia, whose lotus feet are worshipped by the goddesses of innumerable universes, the two syllables of whose name, Radha, were produced from the churning of the ocean of nectar. Though I long to serve her every limb with that reticence, she does not call on me. Friend, your soft speech, like melting ghee, only has the effect of making these milkmaids, who are as puffed up and conceited as the god of fire, Agni, flare up like <laughs> fire all the more. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if at this very moment they are planning to bind me and carry me off. Friend Madhumangal, the truth of the matter is that without conquering the capital city, one cannot expect to bring any country under his control. Similarly, as long as the leader of this flock, Shirada, goes undefeated, then we can't expect her followers to hold their tongues. What to do? In fear of her defeat, Radha will never come before me. Nandamuki, you know in comparison to the treasure of new youthfulness of Lalita and the other Sakis, the blooming freshness of Shirada is of much greater value. Dear friend, just give me my desired reward and I will bring this Radha and deliver her into your hand. <laughs> Brave hero of Gokul, this Empress of Vrindavan, 
Sri Radha, an experienced fighter in Cupid's combat, is just a person to do battle with you in the war of crooked arrows. However, Lalita and these other gopis are extremely tender and soft. <laughs> Therefore, without their empress to lead them, how will her subjects conduct themselves in such a wanton war with you? Therefore, abandon this baseless dispute and at present, deal with the matter of determining the respective prices to be paid for these pearls. Jita, Jita, defeated, defeated! <laughs> These pearls are most rare and uncommon. Throughout this universe, what will you see or hear concerning wonderfully uncommon pearls like this, produced from the earth? Thus, the price for such remarkable goods should also be something extraordinarily unprecedented. Gold, silver, and ornaments will hardly match their value. The only payment I will accept is for Sri Radha to give her very self and to present to me her beloved Sakis also. The price I demand is joking. Fun. Dancing. Juicy, savory flavors. Sentiments. Emotions. And loving embraces. Oh, most elegant prince, you were right. These uncommon pearl fruits are all from the realm of strange wonder. Yet, we are terribly common, not anything out of the ordinary. Therefore, how would we ever be able to pay this peculiar price? However, this Nandimukhi is uncommonly affectionate towards us and is also non-different from us. Now since you are an exceptional Brahmachari and she is likewise an extraordinary Brahmacharini, by the power of her penance, she will present you with your chosen price and having thus satisfied you, she will accept the pearls in exchange. We, however, are all going home. With such loving malice, the gopis, possessed of diverse emotional sentiments, seem to make the air tremble with enraptured exultation as they bent their heads to the side, preparing to make their exit. After collecting Sri Radha from the Kunj and placing her in the forefront, they cast their glances askance at Krishna, smiling and tittering all the while as they proceeded towards a temple in the midst of a most pleasant grove of bakul trees on the banks of Sri Radha Kund. Thereupon, Krishna very happily gathered up all of those pretty pearls and taking the very best ones, fashioned with the artistic skill of his own hands a variety of exquisite ornaments and jewelry for the lovely limbs of Sri Radha. These he placed in a golden box, which was then decorated on top by the auspicious letters of her name. He did the same for Lalita, Vishaka, and the other Sakis, each with their name on the outside of their respective boxes. Smiling jubilantly, Radha, Lalita, Vishaka, and the other Sakis very eagerly received their boxes, all laughing in ecstasy to celebrate the joyous occasion. They then affectionately served Madhumangal a large quantity of delicious food 
and a packet of tumbul. While Subal and the others were satisfied with presents of scents, sandalwood, and tumbul as tokens of the Saki's loving affection. To Krishna, they sent fresh flower garlands made from a variety of golden jasmine flowers so sweetly scented and soft to the touch, the color of the early morning dawn, along with packets of tumble scented with camphor. Under the influence of their love, Krishna felt overjoyed as he decorated himself with those flower garlands and relished the tumble. Then, in the company of his friends, he set off for Govardhan to pasture his cows. Lalita then unfastened the little golden chest with Radha's name on it and delightfully decorated the transcendental form of Sri Radha, who was also overjoyed with those beautiful pearl ornaments. Thereafter, Lalita, Vishaka, and the other Sakis all decorated one another with the jewelry that Krishna had made for them. Later, when they all arrived at their respective homes, they presented this abundance of exquisite ornaments to their husbands and elders, thus satisfying them to their heart's content. Then, they returned to Radha Kun to meet their beloved Radha, with whom they passed the afternoon in the amusing diversion of remembering all the sweet words Krishna had spoken to them in jest. After recounting this most delightful pastime to Satyabhama, Krishna cried out and fainted in the ecstatic agony of separation from his beloved Radha. Seeing her husband's great distress and considering his happiness to be her own, Satyabhama quickly made all arrangements for Krishna to return to Vrindavan. Thank you. 